This video demonstrates the cricket rolling simulator, which was designed and built at Cranfield University to investigate how different cricket roller designs interact with different soil and grass conditions. A computer-controlled drive system tows the roller in both directions over the soil. Rollers of different diameters can be pulled with different amounts of vertical load or ballast. This is a 0.6 meter roller typically used in cricket at a typical rolling speed of 0.7 km an hour or about half a mile an hour. We also looked at what happened to soil deformation for larger 1 meter diameter rollers. Cricket soils were prepared at a range of moisture contents to simulate the variation in UK weather that ground staff encounter. The soil tank included a cross-section viewing window through which soil movement could be traced using video image analysis. Here you can see a typical one-ton cricket roller passing over the soil. The markers buried in the soil move as the soil is loaded and unloaded. When we slow the video down to half speed, you can see the near surface markers moving downwards as the soil is loaded by the roller, and then actually recover some of the deformation once the soil is unloaded. Using video analysis software developed by the researchers, the centre of each soil marker was tracked frame by frame. These graphs plot the movement of each marker. The top markers at 25mm depth show the roller moving left to right and illustrate the loading-unloading deformation characteristic of elastic plastic soil behaviour. Notice that there is also horizontal movement, which is magnified times two in these graphs. The bottom markers at 130mm also show movement, which is not apparent to the naked eye when watching the video. This graph shows the vertical deformation in just the top marker for different roller weights and different moisture contents. The bars comprise the elastic deformation, light blue, and the permanent plastic deformation, dark blue. You can see that as the weight is increased, the deformation or compaction increases. The four loads are comparable to a half ton, one ton, two ton, and three ton roller moving left to right. There does not appear to be much of a moisture content effect although it does change the ratio of elastic to plastic deformation. When we look at horizontal movement, however, the effect of moisture content is more apparent. There appears to be a critical moisture content between 20 and 25%, at which shear strength is reduced in this soil, and horizontal movement increases. This is the plastic limit of the soil. Horizontal movement of soil should be avoided, as it could cause root breaks in the profile. Ground staff should not roll when the soil is too wet. Rolling when too wet also limits compaction. Increasing the roller diameter from 0.6 to 1 meter reduces horizontal movement because the radius of curvature increases so that the horizontal forces applied by the roller decrease. These graphs show that the bigger the roller diameters are, the better. It was also possible to grow grass in the soil tanks and investigate the effects of grass rooting on soil compaction. This clip shows the same roller as earlier, but this time in a wetter soil with grass maintained like a cricket pitch. The movement of the soil is different. By looking at the marker analysis, we can see that the grass reduces the horizontal movement significantly. This is because it acts like a vertical reinforcing component, resisting the horizontal stress. However, the roller has not changed. The stresses are the same in both graphs. Therefore, the grass plant must be being stressed and this has implications for pitch quality.